The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, my partner, Malik Hill. We are already in March, so you know that means March Madness. We are headed to the big tournament it's very soon. We're going to have that special two-hour podcast that we'll have, and we'll bring in some guests like we always do, hopefully in the next coming weeks once the conference tournaments and all that are over. But right now, it is already March, even the end of April was kind of a little mad. We had a, the first weekend ever that the top six teams all lost. It's crazy. It's like we keep saying nobody can stay on top, which makes it exciting, but makes it really hard to predict, hard to figure out what's going on. Um, so we'll get into that. Then we'll talk Michigan, Michigan State, because they just played the other night. And then we'll talk some NBA uh, news. And if we have time, we'll get into NBA draft or NFL draft. There is the draft combine starting this week. So maybe we'll get to that. But Malik, what do you think about this craziness that we've seen in the top 25 and just in college basketball in general right now? There is no set number one. And even though I think Arizona is the best team in college basketball right now, it really can't be proven because it, it's all so up in the air. Even more, it's more than we've seen in, in, in I don't even know how long. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the last time we've seen that, like this this much chaos within the top six and top ten even. Yeah, where teams just keep going up and down every single week. All this is, this is actually a regular thing in college basketball, but it seems more chaotic than usual. Right, and now that it's getting into March. Seems like it's going to get even crazier yeah. with the conference tournaments coming up. Especially you look at like a team like Baylor that was on top early on in the season, and then they lost a, a good streak of games, and we never saw them again. Well, they're back to number three now. <laughs> they've, they've slowly clawed their way back up, and with everybody kind of losing here and there, just nobody's safe. But I enjoy it because we don't see like the undefeated Kentucky teams. We're not seeing the like – one or two loss Duke or North Carolina teams. Uh, it's just, it seems more spread out. We're seeing all sorts of teams up in the top 25, which for me is a lot more fun. And it's just hectic. And I don't, I also don't know who I would even think of being the number one team. I think I'm with everybody else though, that I would probably default to Gonzaga. But I mean, they've lost three games. They're in a smaller conference. So, again, strength of schedule isn't always the greatest. They have upped it in the recent years. But that is something to be concerned about when you head into a tournament where, you know, anybody can beat you, basically. And you have to be your best every night. But it doesn't seem like anybody is that consistent. So, I don't know. And and already this week, like, Kansas has already just lost to TCU, so they'll be going down next week. Just a few spots, I'm sure. Um, We saw Villanova beat Providence. So now Villanova's going to go back up. Providence, I don't know. That's a weird one because Providence sits at 9 and Villanova sits at 11. Providence wins the Big East, but then they just lost to Villanova. Since they only lost by 2, I feel like Providence still might keep that spot they'll probably be slightly b- ahead they'll probably be back to back but then like purdue's got a fall because they just lost to wisconsin so wisconsin's gonna leapfrog purdue yeah, purdue i their team i really have no feel on at this point yeah because they either look like the like clear best team in the big 10 or they just look like a decent team yeah they're another team that's definitely kind of reeling here as we get into the big 10 tournament which is going to be crazy um, just looking at how the Big Ten is 
worked out. Ohio State just lost to Nebraska this last weekend. No, not this last or weekend. Just, yeah, just yesterday. Just yesterday. I keep forgetting these all games yeah. that happened yesterday. Um, but they also are coming off of the loss to Maryland as well. Pretty terrible back-to-back so, losses going into March. Yeah. If you're a tournament team. So, like, all these teams are all over the map. And I, I have no idea how to predict it. Uh, it's going to be really fun when we bring in the other guys for – setting up the tournament bracket and not that the tournament brackets set in stone already, but just looking at the top teams that we know are already going to be in. I can't, I can't tell you who I think is going to win <laughs> is going to win the tournament. I think it's going to really actually matter who they have to play. I honestly, I think Arizona should be the number one seed because they've only lost two games in the past two months. Yeah. Now, they lost to Colorado over the weekend. They were a part of the top six teams Mm -hmm. to all go down in the same day. But they lost to UCLA at UCLA. They're a top 15 team. And every top team drops at least one game. They shouldn't drop a season. Yeah. But two losses since January. And the fact that they've honestly just been running over, like, most of the Pac-12. Right. And they look like a well-oiled machine doing it most of the time. I watched them play USC last night. They won 91-71, to 71 and it was never close from the jump. Mm-hmm. As soon as they got going, it was over. USC yeah. couldn't keep up. They're so fast and athletic. They move the ball well. They shoot very well. They're my number one seed right now. But it is an unknown at this point. Gonzaga could still end up getting that number one seed. Right. Depending on what happens in these tournaments. Well, and then I was starting to get comfortable with, I, I was liking the way that Kentucky was climbing up the ladder pretty quickly, and then they lost. They lose to Arkansas. But they did lose to Arkansas, who I did say last week is a team that I like, and I'm kind of keeping an eye out on. Yeah. But, yeah. And then even, you know, you talked last week about um, Texas Tech a bit. and They just won. They went undefeated at home for the first time. I, I don't even know. I can't remember the last time they went undefeated at home. I wish I had the yeah pulled up. But yeah, sixteen and zero at home. Yeah, but then an incredible season that nobody expected out of Texas. Tech. Right, but then over the weekend they lost to TCU, and then on yeah. Monday they had a close one with Kansas State. And TCU beat Kansas yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. It, it's I I don't I don't understand it. It's a lot of fun though. Um, so let's talk more in the in the, in the Big Ten. We'll we'll try to stick to the Big Ten. But just to kind of show that the entire college basketball realm is volatile, Michigan and Michigan State played last night. And this was a big game for both teams. Michigan just coming off a loss um, to Illinois, which, I mean, I would say it was expected. I'd say it was expected, but Michigan went back to looking like a bad team. Yeah, The defense was bad. The offense was was they went back into those stretches where they couldn't score, mm-hmm. and they they looked like a bottom team in the Big Ten. Yeah, and almost even though they they came back and and stayed tough in some parts of the game, right? But there were too many other points where they just looked lost. Yeah, and ultimately they kind of they let the game get away from them, and then they made a little bit of a comeback, and then it just it it was too much at that point. But and Illinois just couldn't miss too. They shot like fifty eight percent from three and over fifty percent from the field. They were just scorching. Right. So Michigan, another team. They've been kind of up and down, and then Michigan State as well. I mean, we t- we talk about it every week. I don't know what to think about this team. They look good and then they look bad. They looked bad against Iowa, but then they actually beat Purdue last Saturday by three, which was a surprise because they did their usual, like, struggle to score the ball. I think Gabe Brown finished the game leading the team with 12. Just very Michigan State-esque. But they were able to slow down Purdue. Now, Purdue has been in a slump. But at the same time, it's like, did Michigan State play all that well or did Purdue just not play good enough? It's kind of hard to tell. A little bit of both. Yeah. So then we get to this game last night. And Michigan-Michigan State. Now, I like... I like the idea because this is what helped them win beforehand. You let Hunter Dickinson get his own and you make other guys beat you. 
Well, the first time they played, it didn't go well. They tried the plan of let Hunter Dickinson. Well, I'm, I'm talking on the Michigan side. Were you talking about the Michigan State side? I'm talking about the Michigan State okay, side. I'll let you continue. Yes. Yeah. So, so Michigan State, their game plan with Hunter Dickinson is they're not going to double team him. They've learned that when teams do that, they find the open guys. It makes the other guys be able to hit open shots. It lets Michigan's offense open up more. So you let Hunter Dickinson do his thing, get his, but you stop everybody else. This didn't work this time. Um, again, I, I like the idea, but he put up 33 on you. 33-9 and nothing, four blocks. Yeah. It, yeah. The bo- the blocks, honestly, were, were pretty huge, I think, for just momentum. But the, the other problem is, again, look at – like, look at the stat lines for these Michigan State offense. Julius Marble, 2 of 8. Malik Hall, 1 of 3. Gabe Brown, 5 of 9. Max Christie, 4 Gabe of 12. Gabe Brown actually started getting rolling in the second half, but it was too late at that point. Almost. Yeah. And again, it's Gabe Brown led the team with 12. Yeah. Tyson Walker had 11. It's I, – I don't understand what their offensive scheme is. They're 5 of 16 from the three, 31%, 46% from the field. I, It's just frustrating to watch, yeah. honestly. I, I had a friend text me during the second half. They were actually at the game at Chrysler Center watching it live. And they sent me a message saying, once again, Tom Izzo's offensive sets are absolute trash. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what it is about this team where they they get into there there was like a four to five minute point in the second half where they would just like pass it between three players, dribble it into the defender, pass it off, dribble into the defender, and they, yeah. like it, they just keep going back and forth, no sets, not like not much moving, just guys passing it back and forth and trying to force it, and I don't know what was going on exactly with their offense. It it seemed like there was just like there was no rhythm, there was no energy, there was just like. Yeah. It's it's hard to describe. Mm-hmm. And now, like, I don't know. Like, I think in this case, like, Matty Sissoko actually came in and did a decent job. It's the best on off offense I've ever seen him. Yeah. By so, far. So he made an impact. He came in, you know, gave his fouls, played fine. But I don't know. And, and the other thing, too, is, like, not adjusting like Hunter Dickinson at this point is killing you that plan is not working this time apparently you know he's he's taking advantage that Marcus Bingham is not out on the floor in this game he played Bingham played nine minutes he did have two blocks two points two rebounds two two fouls I just like this is the other problem that I brought up beforehand Michigan State is very undersized. Bingham is the only big guy they have. Yeah, sure, Matty Sissoko is a center, but he's 6'8". I think more of a problem is I think your best big is Julius Marble. Yeah. And Marcus Bingham is seven foot and should be the big, but he's not better than Julius Marble. But again, that's, he blocks shots. That's That's probably the biggest positive you get out of Marcus Bingham. Well, and that's what I'm saying, like, all season we've been talking about Michigan State is this weird group of like six six to six eight forwards. That is like the bulk of their team. That is the bulk of their talent. And if you run into a big big man like Kofi Coburn, Hunter Dickinson, they're all over the Big Ten. You can't it's gonna be hard to guard that kind of game plan. So it's a bad it's it's a bad news situation for Michigan State heading into the Big Ten tournament. And this was exactly what Michigan needed. So Michigan State, they're gonna play Ohio State tomorrow. Who's yeah, on a bad run right now. Yeah, so, so, so who two, knows what that will be. Two teams that desperately need this win, especially for Big Ten seeding for that tournament. That's I think that's gonna be more important, honestly. Um and then they wrap up with Maryland, which if they lose to Maryland I will not be good. I might be giving up on the season. <laughs> um, and then now Michigan, 
you know, because they beat Michigan State, I think they're pretty safe into the NCAA tournament at this point. I I think you have to win. Winning these last two almost secures it. True. I think you need to win yeah, at least. Yeah, they do need yeah. they do need one of them cuz it's Iowa and Ohio State. They beat Iowa at Iowa, which was a huge one to get them to this point. Right. They need to beat them again. Yeah. So that that will be also tomorrow. And then Ohio State on the weekend. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they got to win one more. Yeah. At least one of these last two and then one or two more in the Big Ten tournament. Yeah. But they're they're starting to build themselves a decent resume for it. Um, Yeah. And then the Big Ten tournament, uh, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Because right now, Wisconsin's the hot, the hot team. Like we said, they just beat Purdue. You got Illinois, Iowa, Ohio State, all those top 25 teams. I mean, I, I, Rutgers, they're 10 and 8 in the conference. They're the same as Michigan State and Michigan. Michigan, Michigan State, Rutgers, yeah, all 10 and 8. All 10 and 8. And then Iowa and Ohio State are eleven and seven. Yeah, it's it's such a tight race. It's crazy mm-hmm. seeing how close it all is. Like Michigan can beat Iowa tomorrow, right? They'll be eleven and eight, and Iowa will be eleven and eight. I don't know how far that's going to push Michigan up. Right. It's 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 weird. A- and then the problem too is like, I mean, Nebraska just beat Ohio State, and they're at the bottom. Yes. So, uh, what does that say? Uh, again, though, it goes back to you, you can't take the Big Ten lightly. Yeah, right, right now, if I had to go with odds, I'd go with Illinois in the Big Ten tournament. Hmm. Because Kobe is just a force. I mean, Kofi is just a force against anybody. And they've been ridiculously hot shooting the ball lately. Yeah. Now, it, it's a chance they could go cold again. But I trust their shooters and the way they move the ball and how they play basketball. Yeah. I, I think they need – I think Illinois would need uh, Curbelo to stay healthy. because. Man, every time that kid touches the floor, <laughs> I get scared for him. Seems like you see him on the floor half the time. Hope that he's okay, but I don't know. They need him to keep the offense running, and then we've seen that A.J. Plummer is that, that gunner that they have on their team. Kofi Coburn's a big man down low, so that's a good combination to have. But I don't know. like The way that Wisconsin has been playing lately, they just I don't know. I I still can't like predict them to make a deep run. I I can't. Yeah. Like I look at this roster and it's yes, Johnny Davis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chucky Hepburn has been a very steady freshman. Tyler Wall has improved. But outside of them, those few, like I don't trust many options on the roster. Yeah. Yet they are where they are. Well they just won the Big Ten regular season title. It's funny, if I look back at their recent games, they just beat Purdue by three. Yeah. Uh they beat Rutgers by five. They beat Minnesota by one. They Bunch beat of close games. <laughs> they kind of beat up on Michigan a little bit. But yeah, they have so many games that are like just decided by a few points. They beat Northwestern by six. Yeah. Like, yeah. They beat Indiana by five. Nebraska by eight. Yeah. So many <laughs> So, so many single digit wins, but they they just figured out ways right. to win every game. Which could be a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. They they stay steady in the clutch. Yeah. And you need that to make a run in the tournament, but Right. I for I have to see it to believe it. Yeah. And then of course there's Purdue, which I mean, we saw how they started the season off. There's always a chance they could get back to that. Iowa, I think, is still kind of a scary team to face. And Ohio State, I don't understand. I, I I don't I don't understand. EJ Liddell is doing his thing, I think, every night. I think him and somebody we haven't mentioned but deserves ridiculous praise. Malachi Branham, mm-hmm. the freshman two guard from Ohio, went to St. Vincent St. Mary. He scored like twenty five plus. I think like seven out of the last like eight or nine games. Yeah. Like he has been a machine. He scored 31, 31 against Illinois. Yeah, like I, I don't understand. He's so he plays like a veteran like player. Mm-hmm. He knows exactly like where he needs to get to score. He's always under control. He he never rushes when he has the ball in his hands. He always knows like what spot. It's it's really impressive to see. Yeah. And he's only averaging twelve points, which is wild. Seeing the scoring, like 
tirade he's going on this past like week and a half. Right. Yeah. EJ Liddell, outside of them two, there's there's really no like standout player for them. Mm-hmm. And part of that is because of I think the injuries they have with Seth Towns and Justice Suing, them two being out. Like they have some pretty good shooters that right. help outside of them too. But and Zed Key is a solid big man. But yeah. Yeah, a lot of inconsistency outside of Liddell and Malachi Branham. Right. So, Big Ten, they will finish their schedule uh, this weekend, and we will know the seeding for the Big Ten tournament, as many other um, major conferences will get their tournaments uh, started. Before we leave college basketball, we do have to talk about the Golden Grizzlies, Malik's team. Or possibly not uh, Malik's team anymore. They 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 they've disappointed me too many times. We'll see what they do this time. So we'll see. They just won their uh, first game, first round game yeah. in uh, the Horizon League tournament. You beat the worst team in college basketball. Congratulations. I know. On uh, I think it's I think ninety seven one. They called them Ooey Pooey, I U P U I. Um, but yeah, they're. I mean, they they got a tournament win, fine. But now, Oakland is going to face Wright State, correct? Um, a team that's beaten them, a team they've fallen apart. Yeah, against. which is weird because Oakland had had a pretty decent end of their season. They beat the number one seed, Cleveland State, and then they lost to Purdue, Fort Wayne, who's their second the second seed in the Horizon League. So they they have a chance, but they really need to win. Tomorrow's game, like, I think confidently to be able yes. to actually win it. You, you they even just, if they, they just need to win, I, I don't care how it gets well, done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if it's like 32 to 20. I don't care if both teams shoot like 12% from three. Win. Okay. Prove that you deserve to be here. <laughs> you failed all of us so many times. <laughs> I'm tired, Ooh. Joey. I'm tired. And you know, I, well, I'll tell you, you might not know, but I bet you if Oakland gets into this tournament, Sammy's picking them to win the first game. <laughs> Listen, if they get in, I will pick them to win. <laughs> they will be one of my f- upset. If they finally get in, yeah, I believe Jamal Kane has the ability to go off on somebody. Mm, okay. I definitely do, but they have to prove it. We got to let's stop talking about <laughs> We can't look into the future because that rarely has happened for Oakland in the past 10 years. Yeah, really hasn't. Let's hope we can just win. We can only hope to see the Golden Grizzlies back in the NCAA tournament. Do you know when the last time they were in it was? I know it's. I think it was oh (laughs) nine. Let me see. Because they've had some teams, but they've failed to make it. A few of those. We've seen more from the Golden Grizzlies in the NBA than we have in uh, college basketball, actually. I it it upsets me talking about this. (laughs) I I was there for too many teams. That should have made it and didn't. Kendrick Oakland, Nunn. Oakland basketball NCAA tournament. Last time they made it was welcome to this March Madness. Uh, 2011. So the 11 year years I, ago. The year I graduated high school. Wow. It's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. Was that the K Felder team? No, no, because they didn't. Even I was, make it. I was there when yeah. Kay was there. You're right. Yeah, they. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's disappointing. Yeah. The year Kay Felder went pro, they like destroyed. They won the Horizon League regular season title easily. They just like walked through most of the schedule. Yeah, and then they lost in the first game of the tournament. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they went to like the CIT, and Kay Felder went crazy for like three games. And then he went to the Cavs. Yeah. Yeah. Again, more success from the Golden Grizzlies in the NBA than college basketball. Barely. Barely? Even barely at that. You got Kendrick Nunn. That's that's what you have to hold on to. I mean, that's more than what they've done in the NCAA tournament in the last. You're right. <laughs> so Even though Kendrick, what is, we'll, we'll, we won't even get to, I don't know if we'll get there. Kendrick, he's a Laker, but he's not even really a Laker because yeah, he weird. played like two preseason games. It's a weird I, yeah. A weird one. Um, but yeah, Get Kendrick to the Pistons. Let's let's bounce to the uh, to the NBA then, because there's been a few storylines, and 
I think the biggest storyline that we have to talk about is John Morant. He's been the talk of the town in the NBA lately. Had a massive game for the Grizzlies the other night. Scored 52 points. That's a franchise record. 4-4 four, four from 3. Had a monster dunk. Um, man. Is, Can I ask you a question first? Is he the best point guard in the league? Well, that's a yes right now. Currently, I I don't know how you can put anybody ahead of him. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, but I have a question for you. Okay. After what he's done this past, since the All-Star break, in the past four games, he's averaging 40, mm-hmm. shooting like over 60% from the field. Is he in your top three MVP rankings after what he's done recently and how the Grizzlies are pretty much about to be in the two seed? And nobody could have ever predicted that. I, w- I would say at the moment, yeah. If if the Grizzlies keep this up and they're I, – I don't even think they have to be they're, there. They're a half game behind Golden State for the two seed right now. Yeah. So as long as they stay, stay like, top three, I think there's a definite argument. Um, the hard part for me, I guess, is, like, if, if the Sixers keep winning as well, Joel Embiid is also on a tirade this season that – They'd be like my. He's the my number one runners. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who you, who do you have in there with them? There's Jokic. There's DeRozan. I think this De- is the this is the toughest year. I in think a long time. I, I think I have DeRozan over Jokic at this point. Um, I gotta pull up the standings, I guess, because it's one of those years where, yeah, like you said, it's it's difficult to decide, but it's also one of those years where like. The Nuggets are kind of floating. Like they're the sixth seed right now. Jokic is the reason why they're even right. con- like contending for the playoffs. Yeah. Which is a big part of most valuable. Right. Which is why it's but, really complicated. But I think like when you have a guy like John Morant, it's easier to say John Morant because you expect more out of the Nuggets, even though they are missing yeah. key guys, than the Grizzlies, I think. So that's where that goes for me. I think pro- most people probably predicted them to be between like five and seven. Yeah, this year. And I think the um, like how DeRozan has aged in his career has been incredible. Who has aged better than DeMar DeRozan <laughs> recently? Besides, LeBron is is the Terminator. Yeah. He doesn't count. He's an android. Regular players. But DeRozan, people thought his career was over when he went to the Spurs. Yeah. And I don't know why people keep doing that. They did it with Chris Paul. It's like well, one, once you get to a certain part of your career and you get shipped off somewhere. Yeah. But people didn't watch DeRozan on the Spurs. He they was did, doing that was the thing. He got better as a player. Yes. But they didn't win. That was the thing. Right. He got better as a player individually, mm-hmm. but they what it wasn't leading to wins. So nobody right. cared or paid attention. Yeah. Yep. And then, um, like I said, Joel Embiid. You got to put Giannis in you there. You got to put Giannis in there, but I don't think Giannis. No, gonna, yeah. I think there's better candidates this year. Yeah, but I think I think I would even have Giannis over Jokic at this point. Well, I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough call. Without that's Jamal Murray and Michael Porter, yeah. If Jokic wasn't playing, I don't think they'd make the playoffs. Yeah, I, I again, I think it's Ja, Demar, and Joel. I, I think it was like my three. I think everybody else is another tier below at the moment. Um. But let's talk about those Sixers for a second. James Harden is back to James Harden. He looks... For now, at least. Yeah. But it is in the system that he wanted to be in. It's a real honeymoon period. They play much more iso ball with him. They're going to let him do his thing, apparently. They're playing good, really good team ball, though. Right. Hart, he's playing really unselfish, but he's still getting his points. Right. So, it'll be interesting to see. And, you know, it's also interesting because we're seeing a lot more of, like, Tyrese Maxey and stuff like that now. Um, I just realized he's averaging 28 and 14 so far with the Sixers. I didn't realize he was literally being that, like, great. Yeah. I mean, against the Knicks, he had a triple-double. Yeah. He had, like, 15 assists by the time the fourth quarter was starting. Yeah. They were just dominating them. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, it, it's crazy. And even in that game, like, the Knicks made a comeback in the fourth quarter, and it was really close. 
And then all of a sudden, the the Sixers just, it felt like they just wanted to say, oh, no, we're not going to let you win. And they scored like 10 straight points and took a huge lead very quickly. And again, Joel Embiid, 37 points. He shot 23 of 27 from the free throw line. I wasn't watching the game fully. I heard a lot of people complaining. It was, I saw a few clips of some phantom fouls. Yeah, it, it was it was rough because like the Sixers shot 44 free throws and they made 39 of them, which is impressive. But then the Knicks also shot 35 free throws. What is that noise? I have no idea. Anyway, okay, we're back. We're we're actually back. Um, we had a little bit of a a weird thing. One of the backup batteries for one of those computers was going crazy and it was making a lot of noise and it was annoying. But yes, we were talking about the Sixers and how they're kind of on the up and coming now. It seems like, and again, the Eastern Conference is back to being super super close, and all the teams are basically right at thirty seven wins from. Three through six, they're all 37 or 36 wins. Yeah. And Boston has been like 11 and two in their past like 13. So they're back. Yeah. And and they've beat some really good teams too in the, yeah. in the meantime during that. And then we got, I think the funny thing, which, I mean, we know partially why uh, Brooklyn is there, but they're 32 and 31 now all of a sudden. They're at the eighth seed. Um, but they need... They're still without Durant, I believe, right? Yeah, no, until they get Katie and Ben back, we can't fully judge them. Yeah. So they need to. They still need to hold on, though. And nobody knows th- this whole New York mandate thing with Kyrie. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen with that? So they really need to hold on uh, there. And then Atlanta has kind of gotten their act together just just a little bit. It seems like they're stuck at the 10 seed. Yeah. Like they, they haven't been able to move any higher. Yeah, the scary part is that Washington, though, is right behind them now. That would be insane if Washington and jumped up. <laughs> yeah, if, if Washington... I really hope come... that doesn't happen, because that would be a, a bad look on Trey Young. Yeah. Eastern Conference Finals to miss in the playoffs. Right. And, I mean, Washington still hasn't uh, played Porzingis yet, which I don't understand. I don't know if that's... I, haven't, I don't remember if he was injured or what. Which it sounds like he's in. And, he was in and out of the lineup in Dallas a, a lot during the season, so I'm not surprised. I don't know what the situation is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was because of some small injury or something. Yeah, I, I'm, what I'm seeing is an injury. Okay, there was some weird talk about shutting him down, but it doesn't look like that's going to actually happen. So yeah, Washington, interesting team, and then on the West side, it's pretty much. The top few teams, Phoenix, Golden State, and Memphis, and then there's a bunch of floaters with Utah, Dallas, Denver, Minnesota, the Clippers, the Pelicans, and I um, purposely skipped over the nine seed, the Lakers. Oh, I feel like you'd like to talk about how they're doing right now. Uh, the Lakers are 27 and 34. The, three and seven in their last 10, lost three straight. Yep. The Pelicans are now right behind them in 10th, and the Trailblazers are also right there. So... Trailblazers and Pelicans, I am rooting for you. A few things about the Pelicans and Trailblazers. C.J. McCollum has been incredible Mm -hmm. since they got him. Him and Brandon Ingram have been on fire. Yeah. And they're 6-4 and in their last 10. Yep. Also, Portland. Anthony Simons and Josh Hart (laughs) (laughs) have been, like, one of the best duos in basketball since the All-Star break. Mm -hmm. And it is pretty insane. I've, I've always liked Josh Hart as a role player. A dude that plays defense and hits a few shots for you. Right. I did not know he had this next level, even though he was really good at Villanova. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if he had this in him anymore. Right. He's been going for like 20 a game mm-hmm. since the All-Star. It's, it's been something to see yeah. in Portland. Shouts out to Chauncey getting the best out of these dudes. Yeah, so hopefully. And they're, they're sitting use of Nurkic for the rest of the season also. Yeah. So, yeah, them trying to get a top pick, I understand it. Right. But, yeah, the Lakers, 27 and 34, it's magical. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> I love it. Uh, they've just, I mean, they lost to the Clippers, lost to the Pelicans, and then they just lost to the Mavericks. So, eh, you know, I, I like to see it again. You're a big Russell Westbrook fan this season. Well, 
you know, I've always been a big Russell Westbrook fan, but. Oh, are you serious? No. Oh, I was, I was about to say, oh, this must be sad then. No. The uh, rest of the rest of the daily Westbrook debates have been pretty entertaining and yeah. also annoying. Yeah. I, I mean, again, it's. It's clear that he he probably needs to go somewhere else. This is kind of a, a staple LeBron James team when it all falls apart. Like Anthony Davis got hurt. Now look who they're playing. Stanley Johnson, Russell Westbrook, Malik Monk, Austin Reeves, which Austin Reeves has played all right. Carmelo, Kent Bazemore, Dwight Howard, Taylor Horton Tucker, Trevor Reza, Avery Bradley, Wayne Ellington, all these old guys. They've been around for a while. We know exactly who they are. They've been around for too long. So as soon as that formula of LeBron and AD surrounded by some old shooters or old veterans that just know how to play well together with people falls apart, this is what happens. The team starts to struggle, and LeBron just can't can't carry this kind of team. It's just not going to work. It, this is the point where I think it's it's like you start to realize LeBron's age because you think of those teams with like the Cavs and stuff that he used to carry to the playoffs. It, in in these situations back then, he would be getting like 35 to 45 right. a game in these stretches right. just to keep his team in the playoffs. Yeah. But all the LeBron defenders are like, well, he's still averaging like 28 and 12. Yeah. He, he shouldn't should. have to. But, yeah. It's impressive that he's still averaging. Right. I think it's like 29, 7, and 6 right now. But at the same time. It's incredible time, at his age. But at the same time, for his caliber of player, who else is going to score on this team? This, this is like, not what was supposed to happen. Yeah. They so, brought they brought in AD so he could be the best player on the team. Yeah. And they brought, I'm, I assume they brought in Russ so he could take up. Take some more pressure off of LeBron. Yeah. But it's only added more pressure to LeBron, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's made things so much worse. Yep, which we figured would be the case. We we never thought that this was really going to work. And, yeah, the Lakers are sitting in the play-in tournament again. And they're below 500, which is even worse. I honestly wish they just missed the playoffs. Like, I want this to completely implode. Yeah, me too. Like, within, uh, like, over the summer, I want to hear rumors about LeBron wanting to get out. Mm -hmm. I want to hear AD like beefing with. I want to think. I want things to just fall apart in the ugly. Just go way crazy. Yeah. I I want all of. I want Austin Reeves to be the starting point guard of the Lakers next season. Yeah. Let, let's start Stanley Johnson. No. Let's do this. Okay. Let's not go there. <laughs> We're not going there. Let's do it, man. No. I'm not with you. Too. Listen. No. That's better than the Robert Sacre. Xavier Henry days, Maybe. even though Xavier had like half a season of looking good. Yeah. Who would you rather have, Ryan Kelly or Stanley Johnson? Ryan Kelly. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's that's kind of that's pretty disrespectful. I mean, I don't really. I'm like, not gonna. Lie. I didn't like Ryan Kelly either. So. Ryan could shoot a little. Yeah. He's a a Duke guy. You you have a Ryan Kelly game. Oh. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. Um. Every time we bring up any shooter. Anyway. I'm just gonna <laughs> anyway, it, it it's not that we hate the Lakers or hate LeBron necessarily. It's that we hate the I fan mean, bases. <laughs> it's partially the fan bases. It's the fact that it's the worst of both worlds. I hate every fan base that thinks they just deserve to win every year. Yeah, I can't stand any of them. Cowboys, Lakers, Yankees, any of those organizations, right? That just believe they should be great. Mm -hmm. without, like, them, the actual work being there. Yeah. And that, yeah, we need to, we should just be winning all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's partially my Michigan football fan base, which is why I'm so different than, than a lot of Michigan fans. But I can't stand all of them. Yeah. And the Lakers, I hope they lose for a long time. <laughs> and I hope it implodes. Okay. So that's Anti-Laker your... podcast. Yeah, that's your... Lakers drama. Yeah, let's for the let's day. get off a little Laker hate for a minute. Golden State is four and six in the last ten. There's there's some problems right now. With yeah, them. Steph is uh, definitely struggling at the moment. Um, his shooting percentages are way down. Just hasn't. He's been in the slump for most of the season. Yeah, yeah. He started off the season pretty hot. Um, you know, had to break that three point record, and then around it, that time is when he went into the slump, which is pretty crazy yeah and now he's kind of he's start, starting to, to force a bit it feels like um 
Granted, they, they need Draymond back. Yeah, they need. Well, and Clay's not playing every night either. Yeah. So they're not 100% healthy. So it is a lot of Steph trying to carry this team at times, which, I mean, he's been able to do it in the past. Uh, but the I guess the good thing, though, is they are starting to play Jonathan Kuminga and Moses Moody a bit more. So we're getting to see how those guys are doing. Kuminga has been somewhat of a bright spot in the past month because he's gotten better Yeah, almost like every week. But mm-hmm. I don't think it's – it's they shouldn't have to depend on them right now. Right. But you I th- drafted both of them in the first round, but you're still looking to make a run in the playoffs. Yeah. And I have heard – that there is a bit of a rift between uh, Steve Kerr and Jordan Poole as well. So Why? I haven't heard about that. I, I don't know for sure. Um, it is just kind of a rumor, but that's just what I've heard. And that he hasn't been, I mean, he hasn't been playing as well either. And he was kind of the guy early on in the season that was him and Steph were playing really good together. So we will have to see. He's still playing a good amount of minutes, but I don't know. There's just something to watch out for, I guess. But yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing is Draymond. Cause I think he's kind of that glue piece for this team, but they just lost to the Timberwolves, which the Timberwolves are kind of a hot seven, team right now. And the seven seed. Yeah. They might just make the playoffs without the play in. And they are, yeah, they're 34 yeah. and 29. They've kind of figured it out. Carl Anthony Towns is doing his thing. Anthony Edwards has been in and out of the lineup lately with an injury. Yeah. But, um, you know, people forget about D'Angelo Russell, I feel like, now that he's in Min- Minnesota. He's made some real improvements on defense, mm-hmm. and he's been more consistent on offense Yeah, since the beginning of the season. And they, they have a lot of good young guys. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt. Um, I mean, Malik Beasley is still there. Nas Reed. Has- they got a bunch of guys that are tough yeah. and, like, do their jobs. Mm-hmm. And Pat Bev has on it. seems like he's helped a lot, right? Just with the overall like attitude of the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're one to watch out for as well in the Western Conference. So things things are crazy. Um, is there any other teams you want to talk about? Got to talk about the Pistons for a second. Oh yeah, I forgot about that team. The Detroit team, bottom of the barrel. Why? Why are you? Why are you talking like they're in a bad place right now? I'm not. I just. I was, what, what, what's that? What's that lack just, of energy? What is this? I just like. What to, are we doing? I just like to mess with people. Um. Come on, man. Because we're getting to the the stretch of the season where I had a friend text me a few days ago saying they're winning too much, <laughs> which I completely disagreed with because they're still at the bottom of the league. Yeah, I mean, but they t- they beat tied. like two or three good teams in the past like week. Yeah, Cade and Sadiq go back and forth having really good games. Marvin Bagley has looked good since he's came here. Mm-hmm. I still, I'm still fine with Killian leaving, but he's been more aggressive lately. I guess that's a positive. Yeah, like uh-huh. they they've they've showed really positive. Isaiah Livers played against Charlotte and hit two threes. Yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing from all the young guys, and that's all that matters. Yeah, and that's why I've said I, I like that we we played. We've finally decided to play Isaiah Livers, get him into the lineup a little bit, see what he can do. And I don't know. It's just it's just that stretch of the season where you're like starting to talk about playoffs, and then you're like, oh yeah, the Pistons are still here. Like, but we we know we, what the plan is for the Pistons, right? And we want them to develop, and that's kind of the most important yeah. part. But it's just kind of like, okay, uh, hopefully we get some some good play out of the young guys, and we just do okay to finish the season. I'm, so I'm it's more just kind excited. Of a meh I'm more excited about them than I've been since I was a child. Yeah, and that I'm, is. That's for real. I start to get more curious about how they're going to play the off season, and I, I'm I'm next? I'm somewhat nervous about the Jer- the Jeremy thing because I think he needs to go, yeah, in order for them to go on to the next step in this process, right? And honestly, he just he's just out there hunting shots. Yeah, he has some impressive games, but I I don't think he adds much to the team anymore. Yeah, I I agree. I I think he's. He's a great. He's another one of those good players, but I don't think he's a building block of this team. Um, and honestly, I at this point, which they're not, they're not going to do it. But at this point, I would rather 
them play Marvin Bagley than Jeremy Grant. I agree completely. <laughs> so I agree 100%. Like, try out Sadiq, Bagley, Stewart, Cade, I don't know, and Diallo. I, I would much rather see that than Jeremy in the lineup. Whenever Cade and Marvin are on the same court, things they look really good together. Yeah. So there, there's a lot to figure out. And, again, the thing that stinks for me is I'm not seeing my boy Saban Lee anymore. They, I, I see tweets like every other day saying Luca Garza and Saban Lee are getting recalled from the G League. Yeah. And then I just see them on the bench. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't understand why they don't play more. Yeah. Like, cut down the Corey Joseph minutes, please. Yeah. <laughs> cut down the Corey minutes. Right. They're not going to cut down the Jeremy minutes because he's the most paid guy. But I wish they cut down the Jeremy minutes. Yeah. Well, and they won't. If you're not playing the young guys, just what, what and, are we. Here? And they won't cut Killian's minutes either because. He's still, yeah. He's that high draft pick that they have to prove something with. Exactly. Uh, That's kind of disappointing, but. Yeah, I mean, all you got to do is cut Corey Joseph's minutes. That's all you really need to do. Well, I think That's right it. now he's only playing like 15 minutes a game at the moment. So it's not like he's crazy. Actually, he's playing 24, I guess, for the season. It's, it's too much. But yeah, I, I agree. I, again, I don't know why Saban Lee always gets the short end of the stick for this team because we've seen him take over in a lot of games and show that he can play at the highest level. And I know that he doesn't necessarily fit in with Cade in the lineup, but like that first guy off the bench, I think is like the perfect spot for Saban Lee to be in. Um, I don't know. Again, I'm biased, but yes, I agree. I think they need to figure out what they're going to do with Jeremy very quickly. And I, I hope that they're kind of a step ahead. Because it could, like it plays into their drafting. Because if you want a guy like Paolo or Chet or something like that, like they're going to slot in where Jeremy is at. Because Jeremy and Sadiq are kind of flip-flopping between the three and the, flo- three and the four. And if you go for like Paolo, I think you can pair him next to Isaiah Stewart. But then who do you put to the bench? Sadiq or Jeremy, or do you try to play one of those guys at the two? You get rid of Jeremy. That's what you do. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying. Hey, theor- Sadiq starts. I'm just saying theoretically. That's not a question. I understand. Yeah. Um, because I I agree with you. I I'm not disappointed that we didn't trade Jeremy at the deadline, and I understand that that's not always going to happen. But I really hope that they are pushing this off season to do something about it. Yes. Um. Maybe, I mean, maybe if the Lakers get knocked out, maybe we can bring up talks with them again. I don't know what I, I I don't really think I want anything from the Lakers, but just potentially. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to expect at this point in terms of what the deal could be. I just want them to get something done. Yeah. Even if it's just like more picks, Mm -hmm. that's fine. Because I only think they have one draft pick in this draft. I don't. I'm not sure. I don't think they have a second rounder. Yeah, I don't remember either. But they could get another top pick, so they need to use it somewhat wisely. I mean, there's kind of three guys at the top, I would say. So you're almost guaranteed. Well, Jade Ivey has slid in there, and honestly, is almost higher than Paolo at this point. Yeah. So I mean, as long as you're like a top four pick, I don't know if there's really a wrong decision that's what i don't think there are many misses so you're either, as, you're either getting a good player or a really or like a all-star i can't predict who would be a superstar right but you're either getting a good player or put a potential all-star in all four options in the top four to me yeah yeah chet jabari Jaden, and paolo mm-hmm. do you think cade is rookie of the year because Cleveland is going to make the playoffs and Evan Mobley's averaging 15 and 8, I don't know how you don't name him Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Yeah, I would be happy if Cade won it, but having that rookie production on a really good team, it's different. Right. I think they almost have to give it to Evan Mobley. Who would you say are the top like 
candidates for that. Like, I think Evan Mobley, Cade, at this Cade point. you I, just think it's those two? Yeah, I don't. Franz Wagner was like a strong three for a while, mm-hmm. but his he's leveled out to just being like a decent rookie. I think it's it's Cade and Evan at this point. Yeah, I don't think Jalen Green. He doesn't have a chance. No, I, I think Josh Giddy is way ahead of. Jaylen I forgot Green. about Josh Giddy. Yeah, which is ridiculous. He's gotten because some he's, he's triple doubles. He's shown some really great signs this past month. Mm-hmm. Had a big game against the Knicks in New York. Yeah. Another embarrassing loss for the Knicks. Yeah, Josh Giddy, he he deserves to finish maybe at three. He yeah. he should be at three. And yeah. then I I think you got to even at least give a little bit of a shout out to Scotty Barnes as well. Yeah, he's had a really the, the really first nice like season. month of the season. I think he was rookie of the year. He's still impressive. Yeah. But, well, he just had a game just the other night. He had like 28-9 like, against yeah. Brooklyn, yeah. So, but I, yeah, they, they could be a fight for the three with Scotty Barnes and Josh Giddy. But one of them could finish two either. I, I don't know how they're going to vote it. Right. I assume it's going to be Cade and Evan one and two. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm liking the the Cade and Sadiq combo. I think a lot of people like it. Um, My one problem, though, with Sadiq lately has been consistency, and I know he's still a young player. Yeah, he he's he's better, even though he's act, had inconsistencies lately. It's better than the first half of the season where he was just in a complete slump. Yeah, now, at least he has some big games, and then he goes back down to like twelve points now. Right, but it's just a little bit not nerve wracking, but for people to think so highly of Sadiq right now, and I do too. Well, I I don't nobody sees him as the as the actual second best player of a team. He's supposed to be I, like your. I, 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 don't, I don't think I, I don't I'm just see saying that. people are. That's too much. Anybody people, that's that people get excited. That, that's way too much. I think so too. Sadiq should be the Tayshawn Prince of this team, and that's what I've seen from the beginning. Yeah, I actually think one of my bigger worries, which isn't like the biggest issue necessarily, is. The regression that we've seen out of Isaiah Stewart this season. I don't. I mean, numbers wise, last season he wasn't like anything special. Yeah, but I felt like. But he he flashed. He did flash more last year. I just felt like he had more impressive moments last yeah, year. I agree. And this year, like his numbers are, I believe, are up this year. Let me double check it. As far as. Yeah, his points, he's at rebounds, eight eight, eight, eight in, a, in an assist. Basically, everything's up. His minutes are up a little bit as well. He started in all the games that he's played. I don't know. There's just something about it where I would have figured maybe this is just the player he is. It could be. It could be. But I just figured seeing him play more minutes. Now he's still only playing 26 minutes a game this year. Um, Kelly Olynyk has stepped in in a lot of situations. Uh, I think late in games. But I don't know. I just thought with more minutes, we like there was times last year where I felt like when Isaiah Stewart got thirty plus minutes, he looked really good. He had a major effect on the game. Yeah, a lot of times. Yeah. And again, I mean, he's not doing that a ton. Like he's not getting that many minutes all that often. But it's just I don't know. It's something to slightly watch out for, I guess, or that I would hope he can turn into more of a. I don't know, like more of an enforcer type of guy. You know, like people always kind of talk about he's kind of that big, mean-looking center that if he could develop into that and just kind of be like a defensive guy, um, I'd be okay with that as well. Especially, like we said, most likely looking at one of those uh, big forwards in the draft, most likely to pair alongside with him. So we'll see. But... Yeah, I don't know. Again, the the Pistons future is bright, I think. It's just it's I that agree. time of the season for me where I'm just not not caring all that much, which sounds bad, but as long as like the young guys keep playing well, I'm cool with it. But I'm starting to shift towards the playoffs and those kind of teams. I can understand that. Um but yeah. And I don't know. As good as Frank Jackson's been as well, he's another one that I kind of like. He hasn't played much since. I mean, or it's, I can't re- even remember the last time he played. He Amadou Diallo has pretty much like stolen all of his 
he didn't even have that much shine, but mm-hmm. Hamadou Diallo has all the shine yeah. from that position. I just want to see more Isaiah Livers. Want to see more Saban Lee. And I just I I want I want to see Luca Garza get like ten to twelve minutes a game. Mm-hmm. I really do, because he always scores some points when he comes in. Mm-hmm. And I want to keep seeing Marvin Bagley improve, because if we can get if if we can get Bagley back to that number two overall pick, woo, that would that would be a steal. That's almost impossible, but if yeah. it happened, that would be incredible. <laughs> yeah, it, it just some production out of him would be yeah. great. But yeah, I, I think that'd be a steal for this team, and it'd be exciting to watch. Okay, so we basically run out of time, and. We'll have to talk about NFL stuff next week, which is fine. Yeah. Um, we'll get to see more of what happens at the combine this I don't, week. I don't, I don't take stock in and love the combine as much as I yeah. used to. I'm still interested in the forty and seeing how quarterbacks throw, but right, yeah. Outside of that, it like it only emphasizes like there are a few dudes that break out from the combine every year, right? And outside of that, it all all that matters is what you do once you get on the field. Yeah, like I won't be surprised if. Malik Willis pulls a Zach Wilson. Now I'm not saying Malik Willis is going to be drafted two overall. He's he's going to run almost a four four. But I just it's, think it's going to make people go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's going to do some things at this combine that are going to bring up a lot of hype to him. Oh yeah, that might be overhyped. And I'm a Malik it's Willis fan. Be. He's I'm I'm going to throw out a big, big prediction now. He's going to be the first quarterback drafted. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't know we were going bold predictions today, but okay. I don't think it's that bold. A team is going to take a. Teams take swings, Joey. I think teams are, are taking crazier swings in the past. Yeah, Johnny Manziel was a first round. I, I pick. guess in this draft class, yeah, there have been some crazy swings think, on quarterback. I think that people are so locked in on Kenny Pickett at this point. It's the safe pick, and how often do NFL teams go with the safe pick? I don't know. We'll and, talk and, about and, it next week. <laughs> good segue. <laughs> we do, good segue. When we do some NFL draft talk. Um, we will also wrap up the college basketball regular season. I think basically all games will be done, if not just a few left, and we'll see all the um, yeah, conference the, tournament. The big brackets. conference tournaments will be like either starting or like in the thick of it. Right. So we'll get to discuss that next week. Uh, maybe do a little more NBA updates. We'll see. Not a whole lot going on at the in the NBA at the moment because it's that weird in between All Star and playoffs. So we'll see what we got going. We'll talk more about NFL, like we said. We'll get some draft talk. Maybe we'll see what the Lions will do. But, yeah, it's March. It's madness. One of my favorite times of the year. We will see you guys next time. If Oakland loses tomorrow, I'm starting the next podcast. We're not We're not doing the regular intro. I'm doing a two- to three-minute tirade. I, I, I'm going to be, I'm gonna unleash. I'm going crazy with this. You better get it done, go